Hi, I'm John Valvano. Here at the University of Texas, we teach three embedded system classes, two of which have been converted to MOOCs. Uh, the freshman is a required class on introduction to embedded systems. And the fun part about this MOOC is this MOOC had a physical lab component. Uh, and we had lots of students uh, performing labs from all over the world. Our junior level, system level class is interesting in the students will design, create, and test their own printed circuit board with which they'll create a system. And in our uh, senior grad class, students will design their own real-time operating system and use it to drive an autonomous robot. It's this RTOS class that is converted to a MOOC which will run uh, this fall. There are four takeaways I want you to get from this video. First is we teach in a bottom-up way. That means we start with transistors, to gates, to computers, to systems, assembly to C, to C++, to Java. And in this way, we can understand the abstraction process. And that is, if we first understand something completely, and then we put that understanding in a box, and then we use the box. That's the essence of system-level design. With embedded systems, one can get overwhelmed with the details. So we pride ourselves in the ability to make our problems very, very simple. And in that simplicity, we can expose fundamental concepts and hide the complexity of the detail. And we ascribe to the see one, do one, teach one mantra of education. And so students, when they're done with their labs, are encouraged to help each other. Uh, and in that way, by explaining the concept to someone else, uh, that really does reinforce their understanding of what they just did. Third, we believe design occurs everywhere. And so the students will get their own. This is a Teva launch pad. Um, they will get their own voltmeters and their own soldering iron. We'll give them a lot of parts. The compiler is free. Uh, the system we develop has its own internal scope and logic analyzer and so in this way the students can be thinking about and doing uh, their laboratories wherever they are. And one way to remove this fear of failure which is important in developing a creative and design mind and that is as long as the students have mastered the educational objectives uh, they'll earn a hundred percent. And it doesn't matter whether the students don't know how to do the labs. We'll teach it to them. Uh, it doesn't matter if their system doesn't work. We'll help them make it work. And in this way, there's a fearless approach to the laboratory experience. And we encourage the students to help each other. And we reward them for taking risks. Uh, these are the labs that we uh, did in our freshman class, and these are the same labs we do uh, on the MOOC. Uh, embodied in here is a bunch of fun things like the traffic light controller and the music player and the communication, but it all ends with a uh, open-ended design, in this particular case, a handheld game. We converted the freshman class to a MOOC, ran it three times, uh, lots of people uh, engaged. It's a MOOC, it's not college, but it is learning. Students go into a MOOC for all sorts of reasons. Uh, it turns out they seem to be finding what they're looking for. Uh, as I mentioned, this class, this MOOC has a physical lab. Uh, one of the fun things is everything we did in a MOOC is open and available for anybody to to look at, I included our, our animations, our videos, our labs, uh, all of this stuff is available online. One of the interesting problems we had to solve in order to make it a MOOC was how do you grade a physical lab? And so if you think about it, what we did is we created a virtual TA. And just like the real TA, it has to control the inputs. Okay? And it doesn't matter whether you're running in simulation or on the real board, we can control the inputs. And then we have to observe the outputs. Again, pretty easy to do both in simulation and on the physical board. And then the last thing we have to do is evaluate the performance. And this is where our automatic graders were allowed, uh, were used for the students around the world uh, to grade their labs. Along the way, we created a logic analyzer for both simulation and the real board and a scope. Uh, shown here, which uh, runs this particular one here, is running on the real board. Okay, so in summary, we have a bottom-up class. It's lab-centered. We encourage design by empowering and removing the risk. Uh, and in that way, we can enhance understanding, encourage design, and develop that creative mind. Uh, all of our material is here on the web. Uh, uh, thanks for listening.